circular cross sections here, 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 and then you have your arc here. So that's a mix as well. And then this is just a twisted axis on the, on the top and on the bottom. Again, these are elliptical or arc types here, but then when you go into the solid wood, you start turning standard beads and standard coves. few things I need to mention. You need to label your axes <laughs> right on your wood. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you will get very strange results. <laughs> results that you never anticipated going into this. So That's why I've got strange results. <laughs> <laughs> lost his pen. <laughs> and one of the nice things about marking your wood is that you can go back to a previous axis because we pre-press all of these before we start turning. We pre-press all of these axes with, and I'm using a spur, spur here. And what that allows you to do is turn thinner pieces. If you didn't pre-press the axis and you tried to press an axis after You'll break it. Ask me how I know. <laughs> you, you will definitely crack it. Yes. Can you measure to aligning them so that they're truly parallel? Yes. The, the best way to do this, and, and actually your, your delta lathe has an index wheel on it. What I do is, on the deltas, I set at eight, I draw a line using this as a, as a guide. I draw a line. Then I go to 16. I draw another line, and then I go to 24, and I draw the third line, mm -hmm. and then I just follow it, those lines, and I draw the axes towards the center again. Mm -hmm. And that way you get very precise thirds. It's very, very nice to have a, a lathe with an index on it, because you can do thirds, quarters, you know, anything that you can divide into by 24 and get an equal number. Uh, less is better. When you start going to many axes, you start getting work that is confusing. It, it's, it's, it's sort of out of, it's, it's out of control. When, when you go to simple, again, this is only two axes, and you get a very, very nice shape. Sanding. <laughs> If you have archetype, if you have archetype compounds, you cannot sand while it's turning. You have to stop, hand sand, and go through the grits hand sanding to get the tool marks out and everything else. I like using poplar for practice wood. It's a tight grain wood. This, I believe, is pine. It chips out like crazy. So what I want to do now is actually start with a blank, and I've, I've laid all the axes out. I've pre-pressed the axes. One, two, three. And again, one, two, three. And make sure that when you, pre when you label this one, go like this and label the other one one, instead of trying to flip it around. So I pre-pressed all these axes, and what I'm going to do is turn, let's turn a little larger version of this. Okay. So upon uh, this one here, you got three. Three axes. Three axes. Okay. And it's going to be what we call a twisted axis. So we're going to mount one and two, then two and three, then three and one. I'm sorry, say that again. We're going to first go one to two, okay. two to three, three to one. Got it, okay. So let's find number two. Elizabeth, you're not scared it's going to come off, are you? What? You're not scared it's going to come off, are you? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> I, 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 I would just hand it. Helps her see better. 
Remember John Campbell? <laughs> <We're right there. laughs> He's out there. Turn it down so just a little bit with that baby feet. It's nice and tight. I'm sure we're going to That's a Frank speed right now. 90% Frank No, actually, speed is really important. 90% of the tools that Barbara uses are well, one's a roughing gouge, and one is a spindle gouge, which she grinds at a 30 degree. <laughs> Who the hell's into I'm sick of this. I'm going to punch the next guy's phone. So, right. anyway. I'll be ten dollars. Spindle gouge. Now, you can use a bowl gouge on, on your work. Any, any, pretty much any gouge that you're, you're comfortable with, you can go ahead and use. Uh, I'm using a spindle gouge because I'm sort of comfortable with it. So, this is nice and tight. I turn mine at the highest speed on the delta lathes here, which is about 1850. Now the reason that you do that is the slower you turn, the more bouncy you're going to get. One thing you don't want to do is just start in. You want to approach it as the way we did with all turns when we started turning, is just find that bevel. Is there a particular reason you're using this right now instead of the other gal? I could use a, I could use a one all the time. If you're comfortable with, you can use a roughing gouge for this. Um, I've not tried it, but I, I'm sure it'll work. Bam! And basically what I'm doing is cutting a toe. And how, and how long will you cut that toe? Well, I'm trying to cut the air wood. I don't want to get to the solid wood. Pardon? You try, try to, don't look at the tool so much and below. Try to look at the top or what we call the horizon. You'll get a better feeling of what you're cutting. When you look at the horizon, I can, it's not necessary. No kissing allowed. No kissing allowed. But if you don't, you're going to have a, another side. Yeah. Oh, okay, let's see what we got here. But here's, here's what we have is a twist. Because that's your cut. <coughs> we, ha we do have a cove. Now with this, what we'd like to do is get the cove the same on each every axis. So this is a nice little tool <coughs> to keep your just measure from your tool rest to the depth deepest part of the cove and try and do that for the other two axes. Could you use an outside caliper for that too? Hard. <coughs> this is the easy way. Mm -hmm. Barbara uses popsicle sticks. 
She takes a stick, she marks it, and that's it. It's kind of hard to eat popsicles. Yeah, I know. It's very, very hard to eat popsicles. So, so we've done one to two. And now we're going to do... Hot. Now we're going to do two to three. Each of these steps you're going through now, roughing it out, or are you trying to get your final cut on that? I, I'm, I'm this. I'm just roughing this for the demo. I understand, but if you if you're trying, would you come back to do your final cut? No, you're no. I would, I would do to a, get your final cut. Each I would. Yeah, it, it's not worth going back. Okay. It's you can, but it's it's preferable to get the cut. Do your sand, then do another cut, do your sanding. Or you can save your sanding until the end. You probably can't. I wouldn't because probably, I would just be scared. You're probably dull with corners too. You can, but the, yeah, the corners end up yeah, exactly. round it off. Yeah, probably. Unless yeah. you use some kind of a firm, relatively firm. Okay, so yeah, I, I, I like a board. Yeah, 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 I don't think you could. If you just yeah, it's so I've I've done I've done the two axes, and, and I'm going to do the third one. Are you going to measure that one there? Or just well, I should measure that. You're absolutely right. A board with cork matching. That's close. Lucky. Rather be lucky than good. And the last one is three, two, one. I just slipped too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need something made out of a leaf. Go ahead and get it. Use that for a paddle also. <laughs> <laughs> you need something made out of a leaf spring. <laughs>
Anyway, this is how, again, this is really rough. I just want to show that this is how you get your, your three twisted axes. You know, this was being rough cut. And I wasn't paying attention to the depth and things, but there are ways to do this to get, you know, much, much better results. And again... <clears throat> Question? Yeah. Do you find that the four-blade uh, uh, drive... <coughs> She prefer she prefers the four the four. Do you um, find it reliable enough? I find it very reliable. That's the first slip I've ever had okay. with it. Because I can see the thing flying all over the place. That needs. Yeah, um, but again, to go back to Bob's questions about the the size of the wood. <clears throat> I'm going to leave this book anywhere here. Um, yeah, that book. Yeah, the, the, the squatter the wood, the more, quote, artsy it gets. And you tend to get stacked clamshells, bent over clamshells. The thinner the wood, you get, you get better outcomes where you can get more functional pieces such as this and, and the other type of candlestick like that. So they're, they're, the thing is, once you start thinking about the number of axes, the placement of axes, whether you want arc type, circle type, twisted axes, or parallel axes, you start getting into an almost infinite number of shapes. So that's, I'm going to leave this book. I really suggest that maybe we can invest and get a single copy of this book. Uh, from Barbara. You know, I purchased this as my own personal copy. And also, Barbara has an amazing video. And I, I, I have the URL for that video on, on the bottom of this. It's an hour and a half video where she goes through every single one of these quadrants and she gives a lot more detail than I can do in the you know, almost half hour that I, I've done this. She also has a, a really good website with links to other websites on multi-turning, on multi-axis turning. And again, there are just a few things you have to remember. You have to use sharp tools. In fact, I, I, I sharpened this just before I started. Turn at the highest speed you're comfortable with. I mean, 2,000 RPM and higher are nice speeds. Pre-press your axes before turning. Label all your axes. Hand sand the arc type shapes, because if you try it on the lathe, you're gonna get banged up knuckles. And have fun. Just experiment with it and have some fun. With it. And I've just condensed Barbara's almost two hour talk into a half hour, and if you have any more questions, just ask me. Do you have any finished pieces to show? Well, again, this is this is a standard, you know, finish piece. No, but, but for variety. No, what, what I've been doing it. Finishes up no one. Yeah, I mean, my my most my most quote finished piece is, is is probably that. But that's all practice with also. I've I've just been playing for the past month with all of these axes, and you get some results you like, and some results go into the burn bin. Uh, but. You can get some very, very nice results from this. Any more questions? Okay.